Now, I'm going to open again with the classic uh, Leo Tolstoy from War and Peace. An action once committed is irrevocable, and its effect, coinciding in time with millions of actions of the people, acquires historical significance. So when the people of Ukraine voted to be a sovereign state, now I, now you guys have just decided, actually, no, that's just, that's just not a thing. I mean, is it really, is it, it, they are a sovereign state. So how can you, how can Russia now come in and be like, actually, we're protecting this? And I, a follow up question very quickly. You mentioned Donetsk and Luhansk. I apologize for my Russian, um, uh, <laughs> my Russian articulation. But if you want to, if you want to protect the people in uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, why are you not focusing on those two places only? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> well, first, we have never had problems uh, with uh, with Ukraine's independence. In fact, we were funding and subsidizing them for more than 20 years. We were uh, actually uh, financing their development through cheap uh, supplies of energy to them. Uh, and uh, we were very happy trading with them and cooperating with them until <laughs> until uh, 2014. And uh, so uh, there is no question. Uh, I mean, uh, we 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 have admitted uh, Ukraine as an independent state, and we have established uh, our cooperation with them. They and uh, uh, so it's. Uh, it could continue had they not uh, started, uh, I mean, uh, playing against us uh, in Europe, which is, uh, that's the, f- uh, the first answer. The second, the answer to the second question is, uh, why don't we limit our operation to uh, the Lugansk and uh, Donetsk areas? Uh, first, since uh, 2014 there has been an unending war uh, between the the kiev regime and uh, lugansk and donetsk and there they were actually it started uh, with uh, sending in the troops uh, and uh, also uh, the air force and uh, armored vehicles and tanks to actually shoot at those people because they did not agree with the outcome of the coup in uh, in Kiev, and also the, for example, the first uh, the first act that the new government tried to pass uh, was uh, a law that uh, actually discriminated against the Russian language, and those people are all Russian speaking. So uh, what they wanted is to have uh, is to speak their language, teach their children in their language and actually have a little bit of autonomy for that. And it was a peaceful movement Uh, for that. The uh, the Kiev, uh, the Kiev authorities have uh, uh, reacted to that uh, with uh, artillery and uh, rockets. And okay, those people resisted, and then they had a referendum for independence. Uh, and throughout all those years, I mean, uh, eight years, they have been bombarding peaceful cities and killing people every day. In Donetsk, there is a special cemetery for children killed by the Ukrainian bombardments and shellings. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, just, uh, yeah. just to, 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 to finish, uh, we in fact tried to uh, Russia, we tried uh, to contribute to a peaceful solution. We suggested the Minsk agreements. Uh, those were uh, actually came from us. They were negotiated and they were approved and signed by Kiev and by Lugansk and Donetsk with uh, France, Germany, and Russia as guarantors of those uh, of those agreements, and then uh, the Minsk agreements were approved uh, by a resolution of the Security Council of the United Nations, making it an international, a fully fledged uh, international treaty. Uh, but for some reason, uh, Kiev. Uh, chose to sabotage 
preferring fighting. And in the end, uh, they they just plainly said officially that we will never implement, uh, they, they refused to implement the Minsk agreement, which was uh, kind of uh, disappointing. But now you have, uh, you know, what the world is calling a fully fledged invasion, you're calling it a special it, military special operation, operation uh, where children are dying and hospitals and healthcare facilities are being cut off. Um, and and it, this can't have been the solution that Russia wanted, surely that this had to get to this level in Ukraine now? No, of course not. Uh, and second, there is a, a lot of uh, false propaganda and lies uh, about, uh, first, you mentioned the hospital being bombed, allegedly by the Russian force. It's not true. Uh, and three days before this announcement and before the publication of this news, Uh, We actually, our delegation raised it in the Security Council saying that uh, the Ukrainian force, I mean those uh, extreme right uh, Nazis, uh, they have uh, uh, kind of evacuated everybody from that and occupied it completely. And it was not working as... uh, Uh, as a hospital, as a maternity hospital. There's footage of pregnant women, though. No, it's a, it's a, it's a blogger. It's a beauty blogger who was made up. No, it's difficult to believe this, ty- this kind of thing, especially if you, oh, in any paper you've got it, on any TV show you, you've got this picture. But it has, it, it is, uh, uh, it is a fabrication. Uh, this lady was known and she was made up and a special team was sent there uh, to actually portray her as a victim and there was no bombing Uh, there was no bombardment from uh, the plane this is uh, what we we made clear and our military and we don't we do not bombard hospitals and uh, civilian infrastructure. So were there warning, were, were there warning um, conversations had? Was, was there, was there um, conversations initiated? Because it seems like you guys have reached the end of your tether. And yeah. what I'm hearing yeah. is that you were just like, actually, enough is enough. We're just going in. It, no. I think, is this after a long period of negotiation mm. saying this is not getting anywhere? We have to make a decision. We're going to invade. Not only that, not only that, uh, but OK, for eight long years, we've been patiently trying to bring the two sides together. And we uh, kind of influenced uh lugansk and donetsk uh, to be more flexible they were not really happy about uh, the minsk agreements but uh, we actually convinced them to sign and to to implement but on the other side there was uh, uh, a total unwillingness uh, to actually uh, to 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 produce something meaningful Uh, We changed our delegations, we changed our negotiators, and, uh, but, yes, in a sense, but uh, the the straw, the last straw that broke uh, the back uh, was a considerable, considerable, um, uh, what you call it, Uh, considerable escalation, escalation of... uh, uh, of the shelling, because the uh, the Kiev regime they have amassed a huge uh, force in uh, right next, right on the doorstep of the Donetsk city, uh, with uh, huge uh, artillery capacity capabilities, with tanks, with everyone. Uh, the uh, the number of personnel. Uh, was about 120,000 uh, people. And it looked, and it was proven uh, later by the documents that our military discovered, uh, they intended to actually roll over both republics and uh, just push everyone, ethnically cleansing the territory of anyone who would be there, and uh, that's how we uh, that's why we had to 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 we gave them a warning in fact politically and uh, even uh, because we recognized these two republics uh, their independence it was a 
again, it was a last attempt to stop uh, so that the Ukrainians could understand that uh, the jokes are over and uh, things are getting serious. But they didn't understand that, that they continued the shelling even after our recognition of the two republics and the uh, signing of the two treaties of uh, uh, mutual support and assistance. But, but it must be quite obvious to, to Moscow and to Russia that, that the entire world is looking at it as the bad seed and everyone else is right. We know the issues that sometimes the United States also gets involved in things like this uh, and tries to come out and say, no, we had to do it because of A, B, C, and D. This is not the same thing happening here. You know, the same, um, you know, pot calling the kettle black kind of thing. You know, we know we can take examples of Iraq. We can take examples of Libya. We can take examples of Afghanistan from the United States. Syria. Syria, Syria as well as another big one. Uh, now we're looking at Russia doing this uh, a similar exercise to the Ukraine. Is it not? Of course, you're going to protect your 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 country. I mean, you are a diplomat from the uh, from the uh, Russian Federation, and that's understandable. But could this not also be seen as propaganda? Uh, well, you are free to see it uh, the way you like. Uh, but, uh, you know, I know that uh, what I'm saying, uh, that some things are difficult to believe, especially in the information bubble, uh, Western mainstream international media information bubble, uh, which is there, which is quite uh, hermetic uh, to, uh, to any alternative views. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, uh, I understand that it is difficult. For example, with this hospital, you two guys were, uh, I mean, you are sure that we bombed and destroyed and uh, killed this poor lady. But, uh, so I'm, I'm sorry. No, uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, the, you, the, the thing is that I, what do we have as proof, right? We have video footage. And in in an age of information, what else can we okay, rely on? I will provide you I mean, miles of footage mm. uh, on uh, the Ukrainian troops and these Nazi battalions shooting at their own uh, uh, buildings in their own cities because they act like an occupying force rather than the defenders of the Ukrainians because they don't uh, sympathize with their own population. They use them as human shields. Uh, they use their houses. They locate their weapons uh, they, I mean, they prevent people from leaving and they put their uh, guns and uh, grenade launchers on the upper floors and wait until Russia reacts. Of course, it is very difficult for Russian troops to react because we know that it is a, a residential building. However, sometimes uh, there are uh, things, but this is, and there will be more, and I will promise you, uh, there will be more footage and there will be more interview and more evidence because those who managed to leave the city of Mariupol, for example, which was totally terrorized by the Azov uh, battalion, or now they are a regiment, uh, when finally the Russian troops moved in, they let the people out of it, uh, the civilians. And there are numerous reports and accounts of those people who are actually uh, saying what, uh, what, uh, how they survived and what they uh, experienced in there. You say it so much nicer. We've been saying Mariupol. Say it one more time, how it's actually spell, uh, 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 said, please. Mariupol. Mariupol. It sounds very <laughs> nice when you say it. Yeah, yeah so much better. Yeah. Um, uh, Your Excellency, we have uh, a couple of questions coming in. I'm going to get to them. Fred is asking... Uh, as face-to-face -face deliberations begin, what is the absolute minimum for Russia to call an end to the operation? Uh, I think it's a little bit premature to speculate now. No, we need uh, good news. Well, you will have good news, uh, I think. I hope sooner <laughs> uh, rather than later. Uh, but uh, we are negotiating with the Ukrainian, I think, from the third day of the operation. Uh, first, it was uh, in uh, Belarus, uh, which is a country, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, close to, to us and to the Ukrainians, too. And uh, uh, I'm not really privy to what was happening there. Uh, 
I know that there are negotiations, and as a negotiator myself, I know that um, you don't show to the outside world work half done. Uh, you first you do the job and then you show it uh, to the public and uh, so uh, that's um, what would you say the absolute minimum is though what do you want I don't know I don't know I don't know how the discussions mm. are moving and there are too many factors is there is there an opportunity ever for Ukraine and Russia as independent sovereign republics or states to work together. I'm talking about Zelensky and Putin sitting down and having a conversation. It, Is that ever going to happen? It all depends uh, on the behavior of President Zelensky uh, because it he actually provoked this situation. When you asked me uh, why did we have to, 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 to strike uh, different facilities uh, across the country, because with such a huge uh, force assembled in uh, the Donbass area, uh, it was vital to cut the supplies of weapons, of fuel, and so on to the troops. We don't, uh, I repeat, we don't target civilian, um, we don't target uh, civilian infrastructure or civilians. We, we we never do that. And Western media will obviously always paint a different picture. We know that. I mean, that, that will happen regardless because, I mean, we can go back to the conversation before when the United States decided to, you know, uh, head into Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, and uh, Libya. They were saying that they were doing it for the right reasons, right? I mean, that's the Western media. We understand that. Adobe, Airbnb, Amazon, Apple, AWS, BMW, Ford, GM, Honda, Bumble, McDonald's, the list goes on and on and on and on. And on. You obviously are aware that there are a number of international companies that have pulled out of uh, the, Russia. the Federa- R- R- Russian Federation. And also the sanctions. I mean, let's just put that all into one, uh, one question. <clears throat> this cannot be ideal for Russian nationals in Russia and Russian nationals in in the diaspora oh of course especially if you um, I mean if you look at the harassment that the Russian nationals who uh, are who or emigrate emigrees uh, who actually live for, for many decades already in Germany in France and uh, the US and uh, other places uh, they are being harassed now simply for for the simple reason of being Russian or speaking Russian. Uh, that's of course it's it is um, an unacceptable situation, and of course, as you said, sanctions are meant to hurt us. Are we hurt? Of course, it is unpleasant for us. And you mentioned all those nice companies uh, and corporations who left, uh, but. There is a sentiment in Russia now that those who left uh, probably will not be allowed back in again. Uh, Because um, if you think Russia is a market of 150 million and uh, this is uh, a very competitive market because the uh, purchasing power is very high in Russia and those um, guys who live for political reasons uh, okay they will lose a lot of money uh, we will in in a f- in fact I'm not uh, trying to kind of uh, varnish the situation I'm just saying that uh, it is uh, they were a factor in the competition and they were difficult competitors for the uh, purely Russian companies. For example, McDonald's, uh, thank God, has decided <laughs> to uh, to leave Russia for political reasons. <laughs> fine. <laughs> and, uh, Are you vegan as well? I'm vegan. No, I'm not vegan, okay, but fine. I'm eating meat. <laughs> so close. <rather laughs> so close. You mean, I, I you had mean had real meat? I I'm eating meat yeah. and potatoes rather yeah. than McDonald's. Yeah. And, like uh, a good Russian. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, uh, so there are there is already a competition, a race among the Russian companies uh, who uh, would like to uh, continue this type of business. There are others too, uh, and of course it is. Uh, I mean, they 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 are. Uh, I mean, our Western partners. They are smart, and they designed. Uh, 
uh, they, they design their sanctions uh, in a way to make them the most painful to us. Yes, sometimes it actually does uh, create problems for us. Sure, not being able to use MasterCard and Visa and things like this is a big problem, obviously. But, uh, yes, yes, it is. Uh, but we have our own uh, card system, which is called Mir, like the space station. Uh, and uh, it works already. It works in, uh, well, uh, to get it, either it is paired, or, but I'm not going to speculate because I may be mistaken, but it works in China, in India, in uh, Turkey, in the many other places. Uh, and uh, so, okay, we will develop it, we will connect it with other big uh, systems like Union Pay or uh, whoever is there available. Uh, once they have already tried t- uh, this trick in uh, 2014, uh, the MasterCard and Visa, uh, but they had to go b- and they, they left the market and they made many people unhappy and they disorganized the uh, the financial system for a while, but we uh, we got there anyway, without with or without them. For them, they uh, it is a huge market. If they yeah, don't 150 want 150 million people that are not buying your product locally, right? Pardon? As, I mean, it's a, how many millions of people? 150 million people that people, are not yeah, buying roughly, your product. Maybe a little that uh, are not buying your product locally, yeah. which is which is obviously, in essence, you can look at it both ways as well. Your Excellency, what what would you say to the claims that uh, since he came into power, Vladimir Putin has wanted to take Russia back to the days of Bol- Bolshevik rule? Mm, I think it's nonsense. Uh, it's a big pile of nonsense uh, because he never said anything like that Mm. the problem with uh, not the problem the problem with the listeners uh, of president putin is that they don't listen basically whatever is happening now was announced uh, as far back as uh, uh, 2007 in his famous uh, munich speech he said that we are not happy with the way the things are going and uh, we are going to to react let's sit down and talk but uh, people tried to uh, prefer to 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 ignore now we have a situation that uh, that we have is pe- and the main the main problem is the expansion of nato to our borders which is an existential threat to us and, and, but and but nato actually said that ukraine is very very far off from being becoming a member they did okay, say but that. They, at the same time, they keep uh, repeating that, but we can't do away with uh, the open door policy. Mm. And if Ukraine chose, cho- chooses, uh, then uh, we will have to admit uh, her them right. uh, to to well, NATO, well, 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 which actually leaves uh, a, a great deal of uh, uncertainty in a very vital security. Uh, concerns that Russia has. What is the end game? What is the actual? End? So there's two parts of this question. What is the end game, and then what is the 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 response to the fear that it won't stop with Ukraine? There's Georgia. There's other very, uh, I would say, very independent <laughs> parts of the former USSR in uh, in that area of the, of uh, geographically. What is the end game? Uh, okay, the 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 end game, as I said is uh, to uh, demilitarize Ukraine, to denazify it ideologically because it is much more serious uh, than you think and usually the, it is uh, kind of taken with humor that where did you find uh, yes, they are there with swastikas and portraits of Adolf Hitler and you may look this uh, But the president is a Jew, right? Right, so what? So what? I if he glorifies the collaborationists uh, uh, and uh, war criminals like Bandera and Shuhevich, and he does glorify them, and he does glorify the them as the, part, the, the problem and is then, uh, I mean, his uh, Jew, Jew, Jewishness uh, doesn't matter uh, because... Uh, be- because it's, it's but not your, your Excellency, you understand, you're asking us to Google images of this, and yet, in the same breath, you're saying, do not believe what you see on Google. Okay, we will with send Mariupol. you the right pictures. Let, 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 no, I just uh, want to come to do, Russia. Do you think that, and, and maybe this is a question that, that, that would never be asked anywhere else, you know, you're looking at uh, Zelensky's um, uh, inexperience 
as a political leader, right? He was a right. comedian and TV star. Um, do you think that that if there was someone more experienced on the side of Ukraine, someone with a bit more pedigree in terms of politics, that this situation could have could have been handled differently? Um, well, I, I don't know. It's speculation because really we have uh, we have a situation uh, the way it is, and we have to look at it the way it is. About the end game, as I said, it's demilitarization, denazification, and uh, uh, protection uh, of the people. I mean, stopping to to the carnage, to the massacres that uh, these people are experiencing, uh, and also uh, the the solution of our security concerns vis-a-vis uh, -vis NATO. So, uh, I mean, we men you mentioned the 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 talks the talks that we are engaged in so let them talk let them negotiate and uh, i think i will not uh, speculate on the the outcome mm. so mm. Yeah, but the outcome, sorry, Dvina, just the, 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 the hopeful outcome, I would imagine, for every Russian, as it is for every Ukrainian, is that this, this, this interaction of warfare ends sooner of rather course, than later. Of course, yeah. of course. Mr. Maximichev, the ambassador of the Russian Federation to Kenya, thank you so much for coming to Capital FM. Your best mix of music, your best mix of conversation. I hope we didn't um, scare you too much. You're Russian, so you'll be like, <laughs> do, nah, I, look, do, do I, I look scared? scared? <laughs> Please hold my drink. Uh, let's go for a drink. And of course, I'm going to end this. Of course, I have to. From Leo Tolstoy, uh, Anna Kranina. All happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Okay, that's Karenina, Anna Karen. Uh, if I may, Please. One, one word. Unfortunately, we didn't have uh, time for the, the very exciting issue that you mentioned uh, before, uh, that is the impact on the economy. Uh, you can stay. We're, we're here till 10. Yeah, we can, we can come straight back after the news and that can be the final right. comment. Yeah. Okay. He's like, oh, no. <laughs>